name is Dr. Thomas Mensa. I'm one of the inventors of fiber optics technology in the United States. Well, I hold uh, seven patents in fiber optics, all awarded in a short time frame of six years. That's averaging more than one patent a year. Well, fiber optics technology permeates every aspect of the American society, uh, from telephone systems all the way to the internet, computers and uh, using even ATMs, uh, fiber optics touches the lives of the other person in a way that is not as uh, usually imagined. Uh, our president won just because he could raise $740 million, if you will, need money to run elections in America. He could raise this money not only by using the ability to text and reach millions of people, but the ability to carry that information to so many millions of people has to rely on the fact of the backbone that has been set up throughout the United States. And we were very, very glad to be the early pioneers in this field. And so I'm just glad to see that uh, President Obama is able to win based on the technology we've been involved in. We've been pushing this idea of having a high-speed rail and transit to play a larger role in the 21st century system, transportation system for America. This is because we need to move about millions of people from the highways into this efficient modern transportation system with very low carbon footprint. We develop fiber optics that are very, very uh, sensitive to radiation. In other words, uh, you can have fiber optics deployed in space and be able to use it without the impact of the so-called Van Allen belt. We wanted to use fiber optics to guide missiles. And my first invention at Bell Laboratories, uh, the fiber optic guided missile, allow uh, missile targeting using fiber optics. When you see on television the crosshairs on TV with the missiles hidden targets, we were one of the few people that uh, initiated that project. You can actually put a missile or bomb through a window in a building without damaging any other structures. This is because fiber optics was used in the guidance of such missiles. Right now, one of the things I'm proposing at the moment uh, is using fiber optics to detect nuclear radiation. That is building sensors out of fiber optics because we know that you have formation of color centers in conventional fiber optics. And therefore, if we can eliminate these color centers, and use that as an application where you expose fiber optics glass to nuclear radiation and therefore you cause the color centers an increase or decrease the, the transmission properties of the fiber. We can use that to detect nuclear radiation at airports or any place. And that's very, very important for Homeland Security. I don't think none of us could have been managing impact of fiber optics in modern society. Uh, society could actually not function the way we function now. Productivity in America, from engineers all the way to teachers in the classrooms, to cable people who work in the cable industry, everybody has been impacted by this technology. You can, you can actually have the entire library at your, at, at your, computer, uh, at the, at your computer or your desk. This means you can sit down at your computer and with a few keystrokes be able to access an entire library uh, just like that. And this is because uh, of companies like Google that, that you can Google any information in the world. You know, this invention of fiber optics has given rise, if you will, to well, some of the modern companies as you see them. Google, YouTube. Uh, without the fiber optics uh, media, this wouldn't have been possible. Now you have uh, more than 100 million people uploading YouTube videos, 15 minute length with videos that people can watch all over the, over the world. And this is because of the large bandwidth information carrying capacity of fiber optics. When you are making a cell phone call long distance, let's say from here to Chicago, that call actually goes to the cell phone tower and from the tower it goes through the fiber optic backbone system all the way to Chicago. And this is uh, similar if you are trying to make a cell phone call to United Kingdom, Japan, or even South Africa. Because we have fiber optics uh, on the sea cable.
that allow us to be able to transmit data information and video all the way to China, uh, England, and everywhere. So fiber optics is being used by the average person, no matter what they do. If you want to, if physicians want to transmit uh, uh, images, if you will, x-ray pictures across the ocean, they can do that easily by fiber optics. If you have 100 million people always trying to check their balances on ET machines at once, and this is because of fiber optics. In case we are using copper cables, you'll be standing in line for eight hours. But right now, what I'm doing, I'm always moving to the next level. I'm working in an area called nanotechnology. I'm one of the few blacks who are real leaders in this field. Nanotechnology is the wave of the future. Just like uh, we use fiber optics to move the United States to the next level economy, we're going to use nanotechnology to move America to the next level. Nanotechnology is so important. For example, we are envisaging, if you will, uh, nanotechnology based batteries for your cell phone. This means that your cell phone can be charged once and it can last for a week. We are looking, if you will, the time when uh, the nanotechnology batteries can be used for your laptop computers. In other words, you can have a battery for your laptop that's as thin as this paper you see here, if you will. That means that the, the, your whole battery will be very thin, very light, and that will power your laptop computer for, for, for a week, if you will. I'll give you another example. When you pour wine on your suit or on your dress, at the moment, the fabrics that we have now do not repel wine. You can have nanostructured materials that could be used as a press for your suit or dress, so that when you pour wine on it, it doesn't, it doesn't stain it because of repair. We can also have self-cleaning windows in high rises use this technology. You can use it as sensors. I've talked a little bit of fiber optic sensors. And this is because the surface area to volume ratio, ratio of uh, nano structured materials is very, very large. It means they can become the best sensors, whether you're using it for uh, uh, biological sensors, uh, for, for, for homeland security applications, or you can use nano structured materials in all areas. You can have flasking screen televisions and the whole television would be like a picture on the wall. So, so nano is the, the, the way, wave of the future and I'm just excited to be involved. I also do some things in the philanthropic area. And this area, uh, my emphasis is in what I, what I call success park, which is an amusement park that we have. What you see there is basically the rendering of uh, an amusement park uh, called Success Park. All the streets are, are called, uh, named after uh, African American heroes. You have Mandela Highway, you have uh, Dr. King Circle, you have Rosa Parks Boulevard. Uh, so all the streets in the park are, are, are named after, after black heroes. So you're going to have kids that are learning their history while they go through this park. There are so many people like me all over America and throughout the world. There's Mark Dean at IBM. Uh, there's my good friend now, uh, uh, Lonnie Johnson, who developed uh, Super Soca, the water gun. Uh, there are a lot of us out there who are impacting technology. And in, in, during Black History Month, I think uh, that people like us, who are modern day technology leaders, these are the guys that kids should actually be able to relate to. We need to reach the kids to let them know that science is fun, nanotechnology is fun, fiber optics is fun, that they could be they could be impacting the world through what they are doing.